digestive system the process of breaking down food into a simpler form so that it can be used by our body to produce energy is called digestion the mouth food pipe stomach small intestine large intestine and anus form the digestive system the human digestive system is composed of an elementary canal and associated glands associated glands are salivary gland it secretes salivary juice gastric glands secrete gastric juice liver secretes bile pancreas secretes pancreatic juice intestinal glands secrete intestinal juice carbohydrates fats and proteins are large insoluble substances which cannot pass through the walls of our intestine and get absorbed in that form therefore these substances are broken down into small water soluble substances this is done by the process of digestion the carbohydrates get broken down into simple sugar called glucose while fats in fatty acid and glycerol and proteins get broken down into amino acids during digestion these simpler compounds are easily absorbed by the walls of small intestine into the blood various processes involved in utilization of food in humans are ingestion digestion absorption assimilation and ejection the process of taking food into the body is called ingestion mouth and buccal cavity the process of ingestion starts from the mouth or buccal cavity as we ingest food the salivary glands present in the mouth start its digestion the teeth present in the buccal cavity cut the food into small pieces by chewing and grinding it the uneven surface of the tongue is due to the presence of taste buds tongue has tiny bumps on its surface which are called taste buds do you know the functions of taste buds taste buds are sensory organs that are found on our tongue and allow us to experience taste that are sweet salty so and bitter these are the four basic taste the taste buds are made up of nerves which are connected to the brain so when we eat something the nerves on the tongue send messages to the brain the brain finds out whether the food is salty sweet bitter or so hot and spicy is not considered as a basic taste do you know the reason spiciness or hotness of food is a measure of pain rather than a taste the tongue helps us push the chewed food into the food pipe it also helps us to speak clearly our next topic is about teeth when we eat food we use some of our teeth to bite some to tear the food and other teeth to chew it we use another set of teeth to grind the food to paste so that we can swallow it easily teeth also give shape to your face that is why an old person with no teeth has sunken cheeks teeth also help us to speak clearly a newborn baby does not have any teeth it starts developing teeth when it is 6 months old this first set of teeth is called the milk teeth milk teeth are about 20 in number between the age of 7 and 11 the milk teeth begin to fall off one by one hence the milk teeth are also called the temporary teeth new teeth start growing in their places by the age of 12 a child has 28 teeth 
These are called permanent teeth. Four more teeth appear by the age of 21. So, an adult has 32 teeth. 16 in the upper jaw and 16 in the lower jaw. If the permanent teeth fall off, they do not grow back again. In the structure of a tooth, the hard white outer covering of a tooth is called the enamel. Enamel is the hardest part of our body. There is another layer below the enamel called the dentine. Below the dentine lies the pulp. Pulp is the soft part of the tooth. It has blood vessels and nerves inside each which are connected to the gums. Types of teeth. Teeth are mainly classified into four types based on their functions. Incisors, canines, premolars and molars. The front teeth or the teeth we use to bite food are called incisors. They are also called cutting teeth. For an adult, the four front teeth in each jaw are incisors. The total number of incisors are eight. We have sharp teeth on both sides of the cutting teeth in each jaw. They are called canines or tearing teeth. We use these teeth to tear food. There are a total of four canines, two in the upper jaw and two in the lower jaw. The broad teeth next to the canines are called premolars or cracking teeth. They act as Nutcrackers. An adult has four premolars in each jaw. Total number of premolars are eight in number. The teeth at the back of the jaw are called molars or grinding teeth. They are broader than the premolars. They have a broad upper surface to grind the food. An adult has six molars in each jaw. Total 12 in number. Our teeth are the hardest part of our body. We use them to bite, tear and chew food. If we do not take care of our teeth, they will decay and fall out. Whenever we eat, a thin layer of food coats our teeth. If you do not rinse our mouth properly after eating, this layer becomes thick and our teeth begin to look yellow. This yellow layer is called plaque. Bits of food which stick to the teeth can cause tiny germs called bacteria to grow in the mouth. These germs break down the food particles and produce an acid. This acid makes a hole or a cavity in the mouth and causes toothache. Next, we are going to discuss about healthy habits for strong teeth. First of all, brush your teeth at least twice daily to get rid of the germs. Brush your teeth in an up and down motion to clean the entire teeth. Rinse your mouth after every meal to avoid formation of plaque on your teeth. Eat plenty of raw fruits and vegetables. They give good exercise to the teeth. Visit a dentist once in six months to check for cavities. The teeth present in the buccal cavity cut the food into small pieces by chewing and grinding it. Salivary glands secrete a watery liquid saliva. This saliva contains digestive enzymes which help in partial digestion of food, that is partial digestion of starch. The tongue helps in mixing saliva with food. This partially digested food is swallowed by the tongue and passed down to esophagus or food pipe. The food pipe or esophagus, it is the two black structure which connects the mouth to the stomach. It carries slightly digested food from the mouth to the stomach. Food is pushed downward by a wave-like movement of the wall of food pipe as a result of 
alternate contraction and relaxation. This movement is called peristalsis. The chewed foot that enters the esophagus from mouth and is passed down to stomach is called bolus. Our windpipe and footpipe runs adjacent to each other. Air and foot share a common passage in the throat. When we swallow food, a flap-like valve closes the passage of the windpipe and guides the foot into the footpipe. But if we laugh or talk while eating, the windpipe remains open and food particles enters into the windpipe and we experience hiccups, cough or choking. The stomach. The stomach was first discovered by an American doctor, William Beaumont, in 1822, accidentally in the man named Alexis St. Martin. It is a thick walled back like structure, which is present on the left side of the abdomen. Its shape is like flattened U, and it is the widest part of the elementary canal. The semi digested food from esophagus enters into stomach where further digestion takes place. The churning of food into stomach takes place for three hours. The food is broken down into smaller pieces and forms semi solid paste. The inner lining of stomach secretes mucus, hydrochloric acid, and digestive enzymes or juices. The function of mucus is to protect the lining of stomach from the action of hydrochloric acid. The secretion of hydrochloric acid makes the medium acidic inside the stomach. It kills the harmful bacteria present in the food and also helps in the digestion of proteins in the stomach. The partially digested food, which moves from stomach to the small intestine, is called chyme. The small intestine, it is a highly coiled long tube with length of about 7.5 meters. The small intestine is a narrow tube which receives secretion from the liver and pancreas. The wall of small intestine also secretes digestive juices. The complete digestion of food takes place inside the small intestine and the food components are also absorbed here. The largest gland of the body, that is liver, is the reddish brown colored gland situated in the upper part of the abdomen on the right side. It secretes bile juices, which is stored in a sac-like structure called as gallbladder. The bile helps in the digestion of fats. The complete digestion of fats is done by pancreatic juice. The pancreas is a large cream-colored gland, which is located just below the stomach and secretes pancreatic juices. It breaks down fats into simpler compounds like fatty acid and glycerol, carbohydrates into simple sugars and proteins into simpler amino acids. The intestinal juices secreted by the walls of small intestine also help in the digestion of carbohydrates and proteins into simpler and water soluble substance. Now, food is said to be digested. This digested food is now absorbed by the walls of small intestine. Next is about the absorption in the small intestine. The blood vessels in the walls of the intestine absorb the digested and water soluble substance to produce energy for growth and development of animals. The inner walls of small intestine 
have thousands of finger like outgrowths called villi these villi help in increasing the surface area of small intestine for the absorption of digested food villi possesses a network of thin and small blood vessels close to its surface these blood vessels absorb the digested food material and transport it to the different organs of the body where these are used to build repair the body and to provides energy next part is large intestine it is a 1.5 meter long tube it is wider and shorter than the small intestine the undigested semi solid food is passed from small intestine to large intestine the large intestine absorbs water and the salts from the undigested food the remaining waste material then passes to the rectum and remains there for some time in the form of semi solid feces this waste fecal matter is then removed through the anus from the body by the process called ejection mm-hmm.